One of my viewers that works for a fire protection company, won't mention which one because he might get in trouble for doing this, but um, he had a UPS that he swapped out from a fire alarm because he said it was constantly going into alarms and it wouldn't stay on. They kept going into battery backup even though there was power applied. So he told me if you give it a smack, it will work for a while, but it goes back into an alarm state. So they took it out of service, replaced it, and it ends up on my bench to see if I can make something of it. Let's check it out. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. This is a UPS. This one, from what I was told, this one was given to me. This came out of a backup system for an alarm, a fire alarm system in a building. And these look very familiar to a device that we use at work to back up the ONT for telephone systems. In fact, we use the very same model. We have a new model now, but we use this very same model for years. It's a model DUPS1232G by Delta Electronics and has an input power of 100 to 240 volts, output power of 10 to 20 volts, 32 watts, 2.7 amps maximum. And it has an input, auxiliary input, 12.5 to 20 volts, 2.7 amps maximum. So you can uh, you can plug an auxiliary source in to have external batteries to power this up. So it can run longer, for example. Um, this unit is dead. So I'm told it goes into battery by itself. That was why it was taken out of service, because it started beeping. And it's plugged into power now. And as you can see, there's no system power. It's dead. Now, I'm told that if I give it a whack, it might come on, but it won't stay on. But I'm also told that it will operate on battery. So if I if I take a battery, I've got an old 12-volt battery here, and if I connect it up, I'm told that it will cold start and that it will work. So let's see. And this is where the, the fault was detected. Was it? It was in battery mode when there was power. So if I plug it in and I press the cold start button, it should turn on. And it's not turning on. Well, I was told that it worked, but it doesn't even do that. And I'm told that it works off of power if I give it a whack. But as we can see here, nothing's working now. I'm told if I whack it around enough, it might come on. There. It just came on and of course it says replace battery because I don't have a battery in it it's it's it'll continue to run if it's gone battery but it might go off if I bang it around there it just came back on so obviously there's something that's loose inside it If I connect the battery, that cold start button should work too. But it's not it's not cold starting. Okay, it's got power now. There. Just went on battery power. And that, that's what happens. And this is why it was replaced. Because it, it goes on to battery power and starts beeping. So it has a problem. So let's take this one apart. I'll take off the battery here. Unplug the power cord. We're going to take this one apart and see where the problem is. It uh, certainly looks like it's a bad connection somewhere in here because banging on the thing gets it to work. So this could be a neat unit. Now normally these things are held, held in place by um, 7 16 bolt. But this one here it looks like they've just got a, a regular Phillips screw holding this one on. At least the ones that we use they have a, a nut or I should say a bolt on them that we use our can wrench. I think it might be a 7 16 I don't know the size, but we use our can wrench on it. That one's just got a screw in it. And this one's got a header on here. I guess they were just using the 12 volt output. So if I can get this thing to work, you know what I'm gonna do with it, right? I'm gonna make a backup 
for my modem. My ONT already has one of these for my phone system. It keeps my telephone alive in the event of a power failure, my, my landline, because it's tied into my security system. But uh, if I, get, if I get, get to the root cause of this, which I'm pretty sure I will be able to get to the root cause on this one, then I'm going to uh, hook it up to a, a power cord that will plug into my modem, and that way my modem will be backed up as well, and I'll have Wi-Fi. That's the idea. So I have a Wi-Fi backup. Because the problem that we have in the neighborhood that I live in is, yeah, the cell phones work, right? No, they don't. The cell phones do not work when the power is out because all of the microcells that are close enough that my phone connects to, they're all powered up off the grid. And if the grid power is down, all of the microcells in the neighborhood are down as well. So there's no cellular coverage. I have to go outside and hold my phone up over my head and just hope and pray that my cell phone can make a connection back to one of the battery backed or generator backed sites. In this case, it's a generator backed site at the central office, but it's also uh, quite a ways away from, how's this thing come apart from where I live? So, my phone doesn't work. So, Having my Wi-Fi working would be great. And I think this will do the job. Now, I don't know whether this is, I'm sure this has got an inverter in it somehow. I've never been into one of these units, so I don't really know what is in here. What's holding this up? Looks like that's holding it up. Okay. That's the inside. There's a, a lot more in here than I, I figured there would be. There's the buttons for starting and silencing the alarm. There's an IC in here. Geez, there's a lot of stuff in this thing. There's a fuse on the back here. The fuse won't be blown, obviously, because it does come on. I'm sure the problem is going to be somewhere on the bottom. I'm suspecting a bad connection just because the fact that I can bang it around and it comes on. So this might be a pretty quick fix. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, at the unit itself. Got a rectifier here. Looks like another fuse over here. This is probably the uh, 12 volt fuse and it looks like that would be a crowbar. So if somebody were to uh, put the battery on backwards, even though they've got it molded here so that this goes around the positive clamp and it won't easily go around the negative. You know, see how the battery is designed, right? You can't really put that on the negative, but if some somebody managed to get this on the negative terminal somehow, like maybe by cutting this off and hooking the, the the negative terminal to the positive of the battery this fuse would blow because this dial would short it and that would blow that fuse and it would protect the rest of the circuit I would imagine these units are relatively expensive looking at the complexity of the internal circuitry I mean there's a lot of stuff going on in here I've a lot more than I thought it would be in here that's for sure Got a, um, main transformer here it's a chopper it's obviously a switch mode power supply so you get the output transistor here the MOSFET a rectifier main filter cap optocoupler here for voltage regulation transformer and then you've got your capacitors in the secondary and your your diodes over here mounted on this back heat sink and then there's probably another inverter for the I guess for the DC this would be the AC side this one's gonna run out operate on the high voltage side of things for when it's charging the battery and for when it's operating off of AC and then there's I guess there's probably another one over here this might be the transformer for it on this side that is likely there for the DC I don't know I don't know how this thing operates but I, I have a sneaking suspicion that the DC is probably done on this board here be an oscillator in here and, and control power control and everything and there'll be a, another MOSFET in here somewhere that, that operates one of these probably that one for a boost converter or a buck converter I guess it's, well, it's neither. It's a 12-volt battery, but it outputs 12 volts. So as the battery starts to deplete, 
the voltage starts to fall on the on the lead battery it will keep the power stable anyway let's get back onto this side of things um, looking where AC power goes in AC power goes in here and there's a, a coil here I'm just looking to see if there's any connections that I can see they're obviously bad Another coil over here wiggle some parts around see if anything moves oh look at that look at that that part is not soldered in correctly we get a close-up of that one this looks like a thermistor and um, yeah it's um, it's loose that's really loose. That would explain why when I smacked it, it started to work. This is um, it's an NTC, so a negative temperature coefficient. So in other words, these ones will start higher in resistance and, and um, drop when they start to heat up. This would be a soft start so that when the power comes on, the, the uh, inrush won't, uh, won't surge everything. It's part of the surge suppression. But that is definitely a bad connection. So I think that's probably where our fault is on this one. So let me re-solder that connection and that I think will probably fix this unit. That was a nice easy one. This was thrown out for that but then again because it's a, it was a battery backup or a, a power supply for a fire alarm I guess they don't take chances when something goes into a fault condition then they uh, replace it and if we look on where was it was it on here yeah see we've got we've got outputs here so positive output negative output signal return on battery replace battery battery missing and low battery these signals that are presented on this header which was given to me as well because I guess they just had the wires going into there uh, or they grabbed when they replaced it they grabbed it off the new one and just stuck it on here because I'm sure they I don't think they would bother to take it off the other one but this connects to the alarm system so if there's anything wrong like if it goes on battery it signals the alarm system that it's on battery and then the alarm system reports to the monitoring station that the alarm is running on battery and I guess that's where they got the alert was uh, the system reported that it was running on battery they sent a technician out and uh, he replaced it and I got it from the guy that replaced it so he thought of me, he's actually a viewer of the channel, and he said, hey, I've got this uh, power supply, Do you, would you like it? It doesn't work. So here we go. I've got a power supply. I think I've already fixed it. We're going to put this thing back together and uh, see whether, it did, whether I did fix it. I'm sure I did. And then I'm going to uh, take the output from this and get it to uh, power up my modem and back up my internet when the power goes out. Which I used to say never used to happen, but over the last couple of years, power failures have become much more frequent in my neighborhood. I always like to joke that it's everybody charging their Teslas. Everybody's coming home and charging their Teslas and overloading the grid, but that's not really the reason why. The reason why is we have these uh, big birds here called eagles with their six foot plus wingspans and they crash into the wires and uh, knock the power out and when it goes out it's usually out for a couple of hours and until they come back and remove the carcass and uh, get the power back on okay now the fun part putting this back together of course we'll test it and then I'm going to also um, wire up a cable so I'll show you guys that too there we go I think that's in place yeah, I click. Let's um, put the screw down, and I'll plug it in and see whether it still works. Make sure that I haven't broken anything else on here. Well, I've been putting it back together. I make sure it works. Obviously, I'll plug the power in, and when I plug this one in, it should light up immediately, and it does. So we've got power and it'll probably say replace battery because the battery is not connected. If I connect the battery up now, I 
that light should go out. It does. And if I unplug the power, it should stay on battery power. And there it goes, and it'll start beeping. Like it beeps like once a minute. Put that back on there. And the battery power goes out. Now this is the, the connector that we can connect to uh, get 12 volts out. If I plug this into this thing, I'll just verify that it is 12 and it's not 20. I'll just get the meter going here. It's in volts DC and we'll just put the, the probes on and it's 13.9 volts. And if I turn off the power, I know my modem uses a, it's a positive tip, so put the probe in the positive, I'll figure out which wire is positive. It's not that one, it's that one, and it's the one with the tracer on it. The white tracer is positive. So, knowing that, the, uh, the battery terminal here goes in this way. It's going to be the top one. The top one is going to go to the white tracer, that wire there. negative terminal into the second one plug the power connector in and I'll have 12 volts at the end it's going to go into the modem so switch over to I guess I can go either way on this volts positive or DC volts tip in there 13.89 volts. Now if I unplug the power, I still got 13 volts. 13.1 volts off battery. And it goes back up to, once the power is reconnected, it'll go back up 13.9. If we check the voltage on the battery, so 13.9 one volt. If we check the voltage on the battery, we'll see that the battery is the same, 13.3. So it's operating, the inverter is operating now. And if I plug it back in, the battery voltage should go up because it'll go into charge mode. So if I check it now, you know, 13.8. So that's it. That's, that's a UPS repair and uh, repurpose of one of these telephone type or cable system type backups. They, they're used in a lot of things. They're used for anything that requires 12 volts. I'm just going to put this cover back on now. And I'm going to take this inside the house and connect this up to my uh, modem for my internet. And now I have battery backed up internet. Okay, I've got the UPS mounted in my equipment closet. It's like they say, it's identical to the one I've already got. I've already got that. That one was supplied with my uh, ONT. This one powers up my ONT with the special cable that plugs into the Nokia ONT to power that up. And now this one's going to power up my modem, which sits on the next shelf over. I'm still using one of these old modems here, and no, the password that's on this sticker is uh, not the password I'm using, but uh, I'm still using one of these old Action Tech modems. It gets the job done for my setup that I've got. So next, I just need to install the battery and plug this in, and everything should be good. So let's do that. Keep the batteries in place and close the cover. And uh, we'll see if this will cold start. It should cold start if I hold this button down. It should start up. There we go. So now it's, I've cold started it, so I know that that part works. We'll plug the AC power in now, and uh, then get the modem connected. And there we have it. All back together. I've even marked it as gateway backup, just so that anybody else that might look at this down the road will know that this is to power up the gateway. So that's what you can do with one of these. If you come across one of these units, they're pretty easy to turn them into a 12 volt backup to power up anything that requires 12 volts. Now, how long will this back it up? Yeah, several hours. Um, my buddy, power was out, his phone, he said was out for two days and his was still running. So um, they can go for a long time. This is an old battery that's in here, just one that I was given and I say it's long expired but it hasn't come up with a replaced battery yet so I'm probably good for a while. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.